So in this video, I want to talk about the limitations of getting useful work out of a hot object. So the the idea is like, you know, can't we just make a ship that pulls in ocean water, makes ice cubes out of it, gets the heat, heat energy out, you know, dumps the ice cubes out the back and uses that to power itself. Okay, so that's the, so we have, uh, just to kind of make the problem a little simpler, we have um, some hot object and we have a cold object, all right? And I'm going to be pulling energy out of the hot object, say, and I'll call that QH, all right? And I'm going to do some useful stuff with it, like move, you know, move a, uh, a boat or whatever that could turn into kinetic energy or I can lift up the uh, uh, you know boxes and that would be you know gravitational energy just some amount of work some amount of energy that we're going to use and and maybe I'll have some left over ideally I won't have any but let's say I do and I and I and I dump that into the into this cold reservoir so we we have um, a few constraints the first constraint is conservation of energy conservation of energy simply says the amount I draw out has to be essentially the amount I find useful and this kind of waste heat. Yeah, that's, this is just you know, the conservation of energy. Now we saw before with, with heat flow to a, um, um, you know, out of a cold object or, or, or into a cold object, you know, d d depending, um, affects the number of configurations and that these sorts of processes don't happen there, um, in certain directions. Um, and so we get hot heat always goes from kind of hot object to cold objects. Uh, essentially, entropy always increases. The number of configuration always increases in, in, in any of these um, uh, manipulations. Uh, ideally, we'd like QC equal to zero. Kind of our deal we will have no waste heat at all. Um, but maybe we won't be able to do that. So the change in the entropy, the delta S, would be equal to the you know amount of energy we pull out of the hot object at that temperature, um, and we have you know we reduce the entropy with with, with that because the, the the energy is the heat's getting pulled out pulled out, uh, and then we have an increase in entropy uh, on the in the of the of the of the cold object here, and the fact that this has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, this is what's called the second law of thermodynamics, and we saw it really as a consequence of the number of configurations uh, in, increasing. So these two things uh, lead us to be able to derive a pretty simple form for uh, um, for what we're what we're looking at. So uh, so first of all, we bring the, the the QH term over to the other side, so I get QC over TC has to be, be greater than uh, or, or equal to QH over TH, and then knowing the applying the conservation of uh, of energy rule, uh, this is just W plus QC over TH, and this allows us to you know, essentially you multiply through and bring the, the QC over, um, gives us a term QC has to be greater than or equal to. Uh, w times TC over the difference in the hot and the cold temperatures. Okay, so this inequality happens because the number of configurations has to increase. The entropy has to be greater than or equal to zero uh, in the in the in the closed system, and and that 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 will do it. Um, the um, other consequence is that the efficiency. So this is basically saying that 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 the um, that there's always waste heat. The efficiency, which is just simply the work done, uh, compared to how much kind of the total work and the and and the waste, um, that simplifies down to um, just looking at the difference in in the uh, um, in the temperatures over the temperature of, of the high. So it has kind of applications for the efficiency of any uh, engine, it has efficiency of any process that uses this and is binding on everyone.